that intro though, right? What is up, people? Um, what is up? I, I hope you're having an excellent day. I'm actually having an excellent day. Um, the weather here is incredibly beautiful, just absolutely stunningly beautiful, and that makes me feel really happy on the inside. Um, this is the last lecture. The last lecture. I've been with you guys all the way from September of last year. Do you guys remember that? Starting out in Gen Chem September last year. Sorry, that was an email. <laughs> My sound is too high. Let me turn that down. Um, all the way back in September of last year. Um, yeah, starting out, we didn't know each other, didn't know you, but over the course of the last year, I feel like we've really gotten to know each other. And uh, it's been really fun. It's been a pleasure having you guys in the class. Um, a really, really uh, huge pleasure for me. And I hope that you guys have gotten a lot out of this class. Also, I found out yesterday that my older sister sometimes watches these videos. Yeah, that's right. She sometimes comes on here. She subbed to my channel on YouTube. <laughs> Which makes me feel really happy, right? It's like, oh, somebody subbed to me. Um, so, Megan, if you're listening, I love you very much. And I hope you learned something about uh, buffer capacity today. <laughs> okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's lecture. Um, we've been talking about buffers, uh, acid-based buffers, for a bit. Uh, we've talked about how to uh, calculate the pH of buffers, etc., etc. Um, but we haven't really touched on a topic that is actually very important to buffers, which is how effective are they? How effective is a buffer? How effective is a buffer? Um, it can neutralize small to moderate amounts of an acid base, typically. Can typically neutralize small to moderate amounts. Um, but the problem is, or not the problem, but one of the things about a buffer is if you put too much of either, it will destroy it. It's like anything, right? If you put too much of anything uh, into anything else, it's going to destroy it. Like, you know, one cookie is okay, but if you have a million cookies, you're probably going to die of acute cookie toxicity or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, it's just like normal things. If you if you if you overload it in any way, um, it basically overcomes the uh, buffering capacity and it destroys the buffer. All right. Um, so uh, there's a way to describe this effectiveness. The way that I've described it so far is uh, the way that I've described it so far is a little bit loosey goosey, right? Um, we are going to come up with a quantitative way to, to define the effectiveness. So the most effective, the most effective buffer that you can make, okay, i.e. the most resistive to change is when the acid equals the base. Okay, so when you're making this buffer, uh, if you throw in an acid, say acetic acid, you want to put in the same concentration of the conjugate base in order to make this as effective as possible. Okay, so let's do let's look at two different solutions. Uh, let's look at an example of two different solutions. Um, solution one will have a pH of 5.00. Okay, and let's say that the pKa is equal to 5.00, okay? So the pKa is equal to 5.00. Um, we'll say that solution two has a pH of 4.05. Okay, so if we have 0 0.10 moles of 
H A and 0 0.10 moles of um, A minus dissolved in some solution. Okay. Uh, over on this side, though, solution two, we have less moles of HA, so we have less acid present, so it would be 0 0.18 moles of HA and uh, 0 0.22, or excuse me, 2 moles of A minus. Sorry, not 0 0.20, 0 0.020. Okay. Um, let's do our BAS, remember, before addition, addition, and then after addition. Bah! You guys ever seen that, that movie, Babe? Remember the scene where, where the sheep are like, uh, or they, they teach him the, 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 the sacred, oh gosh, if you guys have never seen this movie, this is gonna sound so bizarre. <laughs> it's about this pig, uh, who doesn't want to be killed on a farm, he doesn't want to be slaughtered for his meat. And so he um, comes up with a plan to become a sheep pig, um, a sheep pig. So he starts herding the sheep, not herding, but herding the sheep. Um, and to do it effectively, he gets taught a secret password among the sheep that allows him to like become, you know, part of the brotherhood of the sheep. I, I don't even know. <laughs> this sounds so weird. Anyway, there's this, uh, there's this. Um, I guess, what is it? Password that the sheep teach him. It's like, bah, ram you, bah, ram you. Anyway, uh, I probably sound like a crazy person right now if you guys have not seen this movie. If you haven't seen it right now during the coronavirus lockdown would be a, an awesome time to watch. Babe. It's an amazing movie. It's, it's actually really, really good. I'm not just making that up. It's not, it's not just good because it's quirky. It's good because it's a, it's actually a very good movie. Anyway, <laughs> so let's make our, our Ba Ram U table. <laughs> okay, uh, actually I made that a little too high. Let's scoot this down a bit. Okay, so we have, uh, for this side, we have reacting with OH minus. Um, let's see, OH minus. And we wanna see how this reacts to adding some OH minus, so. Let's uh, write the reaction here. So this is gonna use up some of the HA and it's gonna go to H2O and A minus, okay? So before addition, um, we have zero OH minus, we have 0 0.10 HA and we have 0 0.10 A minus. Now, if we add OH minus, if we add base into this solution, um, say for example, we add 0 0.010 amount of base um, then it's going to take some of the HA away, right? So let's say we add in 0 0.010 moles of OH minus. Um, we're not gonna add in any of these guys, um, but the HA is going to consume the OH minus due to the buffering action. Now it's going to consume, consume exactly the same stoichiometric ratio of the amount of OH minus that we put in. So what we end up with is 0 0.090 moles of HA. And of course, since we are uh, creating A minus at the same ratio, we would produce an extra 0 0.010, so we end up with 0 0.110 moles of A minus. So what happens over on so in solution two? Um, let's do the same thing, so we're gonna add in some OH minus, and we're gonna react it with HA, to produce H2O and A minus. Uh, so before addition, of course, we have zero OH minus. Uh, for the HA, we have 0 0.18. And for the A minus, we have 0 0.020. The addition, again, is just 0 0.10 moles of OH minus. Uh, we don't add any of these two. Um, again, we're going to consume exactly the amount of OH minus that we put in of the acid. So we have to subtract that from the original. So we end up with 0 0.17 moles of HA left. And we produce exactly 0 0.010 moles of A minus, so that we end up with 0 0.030 moles of A minus. Now, what are the pHs here? So we started out with a pH of 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05, 4.05,
for solution 2 and 5.0 for solution 1. Um, the pH in this case is just pH equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid concentration, right? This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, just like we learned the other day. Excuse me, I'm taking a sip of tea. So uh, all we have to do is plug the stuff in, and we get uh, for this side we get 5.00 plus log of base over acid. This would be base is 0 0.110 divided by acid, which is 0 0.090. And uh, let's see, the final pH is 5.09. Okay, so we started with 5.00, we went up to 5.09, uh, we've gone up a little bit, which is expected because this is, we are adding a fair amount of uh, base. So, um, but let's calculate the amount of percent change. So I'm just going to write this as percent delta, uh, and this ends up equaling 1.8%. Okay, so the so the, the change in the pH is, um, or the pH has changed by 1.8%. Now let's go over to this side and see what happens in solution two. Now remember we have uh, very different concentrations of starting material in solution two. What happens to the pH? pH is equal to 5 point, oops, nope. Oh yeah, pK, 5.00 plus the log of the base over the acid this would be 0 0.030 divided by 0 0.17. And we end up with a pH of 4.25. Okay, um, it still went up. Uh, the original pH was 4.05. So our change in pH here, percent delta, is equal to uh, approximately 5%. Okay, so which one is more effective? Solution one was more effective, and that means that whenever we have um, uh, pH very close to the pKa, which means that the HA and the A minus concentrations, or the base and the acid concentrations, are very close to each other, that is when you will have the most effective um, buffered system. Okay, so the system that can resist that change to pH um, the most, the most effectively. Um, also, the p or the the uh, ability of a buffer is affected by the concentrations of the acids and bases in the solution. So, the most effective buffers have number one: the acid concentration is equal to the base concentration, or as close as you can get, and number two. The concentrations are high. Okay, so the higher the concentration of the acid and the base together, uh, the more effective this buffer will be, which makes sense if you think about it, because the higher the concentration, the more acid and base and conjugate base there are in the system that can eat up the added acid and bases uh, to a higher degree. So you can actually end up having um, more more ability to um, keep the, ch the pH from changing the more concentrated the solution is. This makes sense. Let's do an example for higher concentrations. If we just use the same example we have above, except instead of having 0.1 moles of HA and 0.1 moles of A minus, I'm going to bump it up to 0.5 moles of HA and 0.5 moles of A minus. Okay, so I still have the same system, um, HA, I have a pH equal, let's call this solution 3. I have a pH equal to 5.00 because the base and the acid are still equal to each other. Um, I have, let's see if we have, if we react OH minus with HA, oops, to produce uh, H2O and A minus. Um, Let's see, so we have our Bar-Ramu table, right? Uh, let's not put any OH in the beginning. So here we have 0 0.50 moles, and here we have 0 0.50 moles. So that's our starting point for this, okay? Then the addition. 
let's add in the same amount, 0 0.10 moles of OH minus. Uh, we're not going to add in any of these guys. And then we're going to completely consume the OH minus by reacting it with HA that's available in the system. And we end up with, um, let's see, 0. Point... Oh no. Oh man, I crashed. Okay, I'll be right back. Two hours later. Okay, we're back. Sorry, had a bit of a crash there. Actually, all the stuff that I wrote from like here down was completely disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. So I started writing it again, uh, and then it appeared. Um, super weird. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's continue with this. So we end up with 0 0.49 uh, moles of HA. And um, we have to make that amount of, oh my gosh, it did it again. Okay, something fishy's going on. Let's see if we can power through. I have, I have my suspicions, but uh, let's see. Hopefully we can power through. Okay, we end up with uh, that amount of a minus. So the pH in this case would end up equaling 5.0. Oh my goodness. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Maybe we can make it to the end. 4.9. These are really bad numbers, but that's okay. Uh, you get the point. Um, and we end up equaling 5.02. Okay, so now, now the change in pH is only 0.4%. Okay, now you see how effective it can be when you have a high concentration and also more, um, yeah, more concentrated solution and also have the acids and bases equal to each other. Okay, so let's summarize and generalize. An effective buffer An effective buffer has acid and base concentrations. Oh no. Okay, we've crashed again. I think this time it's a real crash. <laughs> I'll be right back. No, I came back. Okay. What is going on today, guys? Today, uh, this is it. The gods are against us. Okay, we have an acid and um, base concentrations within a factor of ten. Okay, so their most effective buffer has to be acid and base concentrations within a factor of 10 of each other. And, um, oh my goodness gracious. It's getting worse. I'm almost done though. Acid and base concentrations should be as high as possible. Oh my goodness gracious. as high as possible okay there we're gonna stop here uh, I'm going to <laughs> close this out and probably restart my computer just to see if that works um, and I'll see you in part two